Hello, it's Shari here today, and I'm going to be modifying the shadow box card to make this fun box of crayons card based on my box of crayons from when I was younger. So this box of crayons actually came from my grandmother's house. Um, I actually took pretty good care of them, but you can see there on the front, it says Shari's Colors. And I just pulled this out as inspiration for today's card. Um, the date on the back said 1988, so this is a pretty old box of crayons but I kept it in pretty good shape. I'm going to be using the Color My World mini stamp set for this card and I'm going to be using this shadow box die. So I've cut two pieces of the shadow box from some number two pencil card stock. Now I'm just going to go ahead and fold those score lines and use my bone folder to make sure that they're nice and creased. So you want to fold on that big fold and then you also want to fold the flap and you want to do this to both pieces. So once those are all nice and scored, I'm also going to add some adhesive tape to those little flaps. So this is just the quarter inch adhesive tape and then I'm just going to trim off the excess that's hanging over the edge. Now I wanted to cut a scallop or not a scallop but an arched shape in the front of this card and I want to make sure that's centered in the front so right now I'm finding where the center of that front panel is and I'm just going to mark it with my pencil and I'm going to use my T square ruler here just to draw a line and this is going to be my guide for finding the center. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp my sentiment and I'm going to stamp that pretty close to the bottom there. And I'm stamping this first before I die cut it so that I can line up my die cut correctly and make sure I have enough room for this sentiment to fit. So I've got it loaded in my Misty here and I'm stamping that with some Noble Fur ink. So this is a dark green ink. And I actually missed a little bit up on the top of that U, so I'm just stamping it again. I'm also going to go ahead and put these two pieces together. I'm not going to complete the box, just put the two pieces together so that I have a nice long piece because my die cut is going to go onto both pieces. So I want to cut them both at the same time so it's lined up perfectly. So I've just pulled the backing off that one flap where the adhesive was, and I'm just using my grid mat to make sure it's all nice and straight. And then I can just line those two pieces up. So I've actually marked where the center of my arch, this is one of the simple stitched hillsides, and I'm going to use that mark on the back of my die and line it up with the pencil line that I know you can't really see on camera, but that's the center. And I'm going to just put it as close to the sentiment as I can, and you can see that it's going to overlap onto those two side panels that make the side of the box. But putting these together, let me cut the whole thing at once, and it's perfectly lined up. So I'm just trimming it right where it didn't cut all the way through because I had it just slightly too low and the cut line was just slightly not off the side of the page. But you can see there how it's going to look. Now I've got a whole bunch of scraps of cardstock here and I'm going to stamp and emboss all my crayons. So I'm stamping with some VersaFine ink. So this is a black pigment ink and this is how I like to black emboss. And then I'm going to put clear embossing powder on it. Black embossing powder to me always leaves a big mess. This is the perfect way to make black embossing I have found, and it's nice and clean. So a black pigment ink with clear embossing. And I'm just going to do this to all my crayons. So I've got some guava cardstock, chili pepper, some fake tan. This is sunflower, cilantro, and you can see I'm using scraps. This is a perfect way to use up scraps. This is Peacock and Sugar Plum. I skipped Blue Jay, but I'm going to go back to it. You're going to see. I thought the Blue Jay was really dark and I wanted to do it in white, but then I thought it looked kind of funny. So I made the black with the white and went back and did my Blue Jay with black. So I'm going to fit 10 crayons in here. So I picked out my 10 colors before I started. Now I'm going to use the die that matches the little crayon and I'm going to cut all of these out. 
And I'm cutting these in order. I'm going to keep them in order on my mat here so that I make sure that they are in the placement where I want them. So now I'm going to ink my box to kind of make that iconic green chevron, I guess, or diagonal. Um, so I'm just marking on the front of mine. I've lined it up on the grid mat. I'm just marking to where the bottom two marks are even. And then I decided that I was just going to take my tape from that mark to the top of that fold. So that's going to be my guide. And then I am going to cover up all the pieces I don't want to eat because I am really bad about accidentally going past my tape. I'm also using this really thin washi tape here. Um, and this is going to leave me a very thin stripe of yellow. And I'm going to be doing two colors of green, so you're going to see how this kind of works out. Now I've got some purple tape, and I'm actually using this more as a guide for the width. I'm not going to leave it here. But this makes sure that my wide stripe is going to be the same on both sides. So I just put that down right against the thin washi tape, and now I know where to put my post-it tape. And then I can do the same thing on the other side, and then both sides will be exactly the same width. You could do the same thing with the thin stripe. I just kind of eyeballed that one. But you can use your tape as a guide for your widths. So I've got some Lucky Clover Distress Oxide. And I'm using the Distress Oxide because it's got a pigment to it. So it's going to sit on top of that yellow paper and look really nice. And you can see there, I went ahead and I masked off the rest of my box. I've got some full adhesive post-it notes on the right side there. I'm just really bad about accidentally going past the tape when I'm inking, so it's just better to protect everything if possible. So now I am going to cover up what I just did because I'm going to ink with a different green. I'm going to ink in with a darker green. Because if you noticed on my Crayola box earlier, there's two colors of green. I've also found the center of those side panels. I don't know if you can see that pencil line on camera, but I lightly drew a pencil line that's the center of the panels. That's what I'm doing here. And that's going to help me eyeball these sides here. And I'm using my ruler to kind of line it up across so that they're pretty even. They're not going to be perfect, but you're not going to really tell, but I'm trying to get it as even as possible. So I'm just checking to make sure it looks pretty even. So this is basically going to ink the sides. And now I'm going to cover up the rest of it so, again, I don't make a mess. And I'm going to go ahead and erase my pencil lines before I start inking. So for the darker color, I'm using pine needles, Distress Oxide, which is just a slightly darker green. But I thought it matched the darker green on the Crayola box pretty well, and I think it'll look really good next to the Lucky Clover. So I'm just making sure that's nice and inked up. And again, I'm using the oxide because it's a pigment, and it's going to sit on top of the paper and not absorb in. Again, here I'm using my purple tape as my guide for the width. So now you can see I'm going to make the Lucky Clover stripe on the other side of that dark green. And you can see if I use my purple tape, then the width is going to be consistent. And I'm just eyeballing where my thin stripe's going to be. I'm going ahead and pulling off the middle just so I can see what I'm doing. And I started to have a little bit. It's going to rip my paper here slightly. But it was an easy fix. I just pulled it from the other side. And that little piece that's sticking up, I fixed with a clicky glue pen and my tweezers. And it just makes the box look a little bit worn right there. But it actually kind of matches my crayon box in that way. But I didn't want to have to start over. It wasn't that big of a mess up. So I'm going to block off the part I just inked. And I'm only doing one side, you can see here, because the other side... As you can see, kind of when I ink, it's going across the seam onto the back panel. I can't do that on the other side until my box is fully formed. So you'll see here in a minute how I'm going to do the other side. But I just love the look of the stripes once I got it done. It just looks so perfect. 
So to do the other side, I basically need to complete my box because it needs to wrap around. But I don't want to adhere my box closed just yet because I want it open to put the interior pieces in. So I'm just gonna temporarily hold it closed with a piece of washi tape while I do my inking. So this is just gonna hold it closed temporarily and then I can start to put my masking on that other side so I can get my light green stripes to finish off the stripes of the box. So again, I'm using my purple tape here as a guide for the width of that stripe. Then I need to put down my thin tape. I really had to think about the stripes a little bit. And then I can mask the rest off with my post-it note tape and I will pull up that purple tape because that's where my stripe's gonna go. So again, I'm going back in with the Lucky Clover for this one. Block off the dark that's there. Block off everything so I don't mess anything up. And then I'll go in with the Lucky Clover, which is the lighter of the two again. Pine Needles was the dark. And I'll just finish off the stripes that kind of wrap around to the back of the box. And once this oxide ink dried on here, it had like a nice chalky look, which looked really cool with my end product. So there is kind of my finished ink box. It's not completely perfect, but it's pretty close. So I'm gonna use the insert that comes with the shadow box because it's straight. All the inserts, or excuse me, not the shadow box, the scallop box, because all the shadow box inserts are hills or waves. I want it to be straight like the inserts inside my Crayola box. So this is the insert that goes in the scallop pop-up box. And I cut it from some paper bag cardstock because I think that looks just like the inserts inside your box of crayons. I've folded it on the score lines and I'm gonna add that double-sided tape to all the little tabs. Now you're not really going to see the, this that much because I'm going to put my crayons on the front, but I just thought it was that nice added extra touch to be the same color as the inserts in the crayon box. So what I've done is I've taped my insert down to my grid mat so it's straight, just with some washi tape to hold it in place. I've put some liquid glue on it, and then I've got my five crayons that are going to go on the front. I'm going to start with the one I want in the middle and then build off that. And I use my grid mat to figure out where the middle was. And since I use some liquid glue, I can kind of shift them around a little bit if I need to. They don't fit perfectly right next to each other. You just kind of have to tuck them slightly, but you can still see the whole image even with the edge tucked and I think it looks so cute. The grid mat also helped me keep them all the same height. So that's what I did. I moved that front one over to the side and I'm gonna do the same thing for the one that's gonna go in the back. And I lined them up on the same line on my grid mat and this will allow me to make sure that my crayons are the same height on both of them. So again, I'm tucking these underneath the one that's in the middle so that they all fit within that piece that goes on the inside. You don't want it to overhang because obviously those tabs are going to fold back and they're going to go on the sides of the box. So you want it to line up right at the edge of those folds. So now that my crayons are on there, I can line on my inserts. So it's hard to see here what I'm doing, but I'm looking at it so I can kind of see I don't I want my crayons to peek out the, the top, so I'm looking at it with that arch to figure out kind of where I want it. So now I've stuck it down so that it's peeking out the front where I want it. And I've only got the adhesive on one side. So I'm just making sure it's straight in the box so that when I close it up, everything's nice and straight. Now to do the other one, I want it to be a little higher, so I'm going to kind of do the same thing here. I'm going to look at it from the side, make sure it's taller than the ones in the front, and kind of evenly space towards the back.
and it did take me a minute to kind of figure out the best way to look at this. But I'm looking at it from the side so that I can see that the crayons in the back are sticking up enough over the ones in the front so that you can see them really well. So that placing is perfect. So now that I have them where I want them, I can just hold them in place, pull off the rest of that liner from that adhesive tape. And then I'm just going to fold my box closed. And now I know that it's all going to be flat when it's folded shut. I can also peel off the liner off that flap of the box, fold it in, and complete the entire box by closing it up. And then here is my finished box of crayons. I just think this is so adorable. It turned out just like it was in my head, um, which made me super excited. I just think it's so cute. I, so I wanna try it again and maybe put a third row of crayons in the back, um, but I just think it was so fun and it's so colorful and eye-catching. I kinda wanna just sit it on my shelf and look at it. So you can see this is the finished box and it will fold flat so that you can mail it perfectly and I didn't put the crayons too tall, it'll still fit in a standard size envelope. Thanks for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye.